Mi rey, tú eres lo mejor del mundo. Oh, yeah, we got another episode of the Innovators Den here with a special guest, Rosa at Park. What's up? Let's no, it's not Rosa at Park. What's the last Let's name? Let's start it again. Well, I, no, 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 it's good. Bloopers, right? Uh, no, it's Rosa Garcia. Okay, so that's how we say it. Go but we it. are at Rosa's at oh, Park. But we are at Rosa at Park. Yeah. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Innovators Den. I am Danny Silverio. I'm here with... Formerly known as Hashtag. That's me. No, that's what I'm saying. And you go with Steve O Business, and we got a special guest, uh, Rosa at Parks. Rosa, Rosa, he did it Rosa. again. Oh, I did it again. Wait, Rosa Garcia. Take two. Do it again. Do it again. But I see him I told you, bloopers are funny, though. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. That right. this would be the, the intro to it. All right. That would be the dope intro. Yeah. Though. I think we should probably just keep it. I'm telling you. Right, go for so, it. So we're here at Rosa Parks. It's a beautiful location, by the way. Uh, look at the aesthetics, the pink umbrellas. What what inspired this branding? The branding, I'm all about women empowerment, so why not go pink? You know, it has nothing right. to do with the Barbie movie. I have not even watched that movie. <laughs> uh, it just has to do with just the idea that myself and my business partner had in mind. Oh, it's beautiful. I think it's very artistic. It brightens up the community. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was a good outlet. You took a place that maybe others would be like, I wouldn't do a business here, and you maximized it mm -hmm. to like, you gave it beauty, the community. I like a challenge. Compared to my other business that I had, it was already given to me. Right. This was a blank canvas, so I was able to design it oh, okay. the best way that I wanted to. And um, I, it's me. It represents who I am. Right. Where before, I would... I just happened to just start managing and running it. Yeah, this took a lot of. But you started your way work. on entrepreneurship, so you wanted to. You're a woman, and you wanted to be in business. That's I was at the right place at the right time. I started as an employee at My Haven Bar and Grill in wow. 2007. After having my first daughter, I found a job on Craigslist because I don't like being home and doing nothing. Two weeks after giving birth to her, I found a job. Three weeks after, I started working. And since March of 2007, I was an employee, and then I became an employer. After Hurricane Sandy took down my uh, what used to be Bruckner Restaurant, I opened the doors in 2013 as a sole owner. I was ready for the challenge. I was pretty much running the business for the owners without the title. The only thing that changed was the title, but the responsibilities were the same. Yeah. You said challenges. Can you speak on those challenges of like opening this location and challenges in Bruckner? Bruck the challenges, Bruckner. yeah. Yeah, that's, I had a little trademark loss through there, okay? Uh, which I don't care, I won. Uh, the, when I started at Bruckner Rail in 2007, um, I was just the employee. And I always give 100% of myself. Even if it's not my business, I treat it like it is mine. And I think after working five years with no complaints and just running it for other people without the income, um, I was honored to take the, uh, the challenge upon myself. I asked my landlord at that time, who was my boss, hey, would you like, can you give me an offer on, um, lend me, get me a loan. Right, right. And he lent me 110000 I believe it was, because I created a business proposal. First business proposal of my life. I don't know what the heck it is. YouTube University is the best way to go. I created a business plan. I did my numbers based on what I think needed to be repaired right away to open it, plus having at least six months of income in my checking account. Right. And um, yeah, he lent me the money. Three years later, I finished paying him off. Then 2019, he decided that he wanted me to keep giving him money. He decided to terminate my lease, and when you do that, you're, you're a hoarder. So those are the challenges. Um, if you don't own a, if you don't own the building where your business is, it could be a challenge with your landlord. You know, everybody's out for themselves. So right. I should have well, taken um, the opportunity, yeah, to buy the building because I had the support and I had the money, but I didn't. He pretty much took my haven out of my hands, and um, oh. but I, but I always say every you have to let certain doors close when they need to, mm -hmm. because he terminated my lease in 2019. I was asked to open this restaurant in 2019, God. so I always say when God closes a door, he's gonna oh he's opening another one, so you have to let it go. And um, then the pandemic happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. Guess what? All the courts were closed, so he couldn't kick me out. Oh, and, wow! <laughs> yeah, and then um, that's when like. The best two years of my life financially came in and I was able to stack up. And that helped me support myself during, because when you open a business, mm -hmm. you can't really, um, you don't have income for a couple of months and the business yeah. makes money. Right. So Roses at Park came in June of 2021 and My Haven closed in June of 2021. So uh, perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect timing. So yeah. you from DR? Uh, yes. From DR? 
proud to be Dominican. A hundred percent. I'm not mixed. Okay, people see me and they're like, I didn't know you speak Spanish. I'm like, you don't hear my accent? Like, <laughs> <laughs> And you also, you from the Bronx, man. So like every Dominican, you know, you go straight to the Heights when you come here. Yeah. And um, I was raised in 192nd between St. Nicholas and Audubon. Then at the age of 18, I have always been very independent. I moved to the Bronx. Mm. I moved out of my house and I've been on my own since 18. Wow. Yeah, so I've been in the Bronx since 18. So it's more than half of my life. Yeah, it's home. Yeah, so I'm a Bronxer. Yeah, I love it here. And I've been in this area of my haven. In my haven, but this is a growing 16 community, years. Though. Right now, you got skyscrapers, everything growing in this new community. I mean, you can see it in a good and a bad way. Yeah. You know, um, I see it as it's beautifying the Bronx because, you know, just like people nowadays getting, you know, little makeovers, bit, areas in the Bronx and everywhere, we need to uplift because sometimes we do get comfortable in situations right. and we just let it be. So I do like that it's, it looks better. What I don't like is that it's not allowing the people that are already there to stay and enjoy yeah. that. The fruits mm -hmm. of that, right. yeah. That growth. Yeah, the growth and, and the change and the evolution of the area. Instead, they're making it to the point where it's too expensive. So now they have no choice but to leave or get terminated like me. That's crazy. Yeah. So through all your experiences, you know, now I'm understanding you, you're you building a new business when you're doing more like a life coach, yes. motivational. Uh, you're doing like this wake-up calls with some girls. How, what's, what's that experience? Well, my support of women started at My Haven. I've always believed that you have to use the platform that you're in to bring others and to encourage other people, to allow them to see that it is possible. Right. You know, I did it. I'm a girl who came from the yard, didn't speak the English language, and now look at me. So with My Haven, I started with pop-ups. Mm -hmm. Then I started doing what's called women's circles because um, we all need a safe circle to just vent. I think life, be lifing sometimes. We need that support. And I like to create a, a small community of women where we could come together, cry, laugh, uh, share moments. So all my events are like, how can we get better? How can we remind ourselves of our own strength that we have? Right. And it went from doing pop-ups to doing women's circles to doing, now I'm waking up with 5 a.m. with women. I've been doing that now for over two years. These women will always come, come to me for advice, but I never felt right charging them for my time. Right. So I said, you know what? Let me become a life coach. Hey. I, if I tell you all the certifications that I got in my life, you'll probably laugh. But <laughs> I even have my own tax company. This is not my first rodeo. But yeah, I, I want to be a life coach. Um, not just for the money. It's because it's something that I'm already doing, but I don't feel right charging someone unless I have the right certifications and credentials. Totally. Yeah. But you got like this accountability thing at five in the morning. So yes. like a few girls, how many, like 10 girls, five girls? I try to keep it small. When I started, I was having 25 women and wow. it was just too, I always have to cut it. And with me, I don't know how to say no. I'm always like, oh. No asking questions or it's more like, uh, it's a thing of the moment. It's a thing of a moment. Mondays we do uh, what's called like, we. what are we doing? What are we holding each other accountable? And then this year I, I pair them up with somebody else. So you are my accountability partner. So if I say, how do, how, huh? how would you hold someone else? Well, I create a, a group chat on Instagram, okay. and then <clears throat> you have to follow up with me. I have to follow up with you. And every day I'm like, hey, so how's it going? How's your accountability yeah. partner? Where are we? Like today is midweek, so we did a check-in. One girl is on her Peloton as we're doing it. Another girl is um, exercising or cleaning her kitchen or organizing her room. So it's like, what things can you do that first hour for yourself? before you become a mom, before you go work for somebody else. Uh, natural ambience. I know, right? <laughs> this is the Bronx, okay? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's just taking that first hour because I feel like we get lost once you, once you step out of your house. Mm -hmm. You become an entrepreneur, you become a dad, you become a friend. Traffic gets in the way of your mental state of mind, you know, you wanna curse somebody else. So just stay calm and organize your day before it even gets started. That's mm -hmm. great. Yes. And I didn't charge those ladies. That's like, I feel like that's my that's pay it forward. Easy, yeah. You know? They support me in many other ways. Like if I tell you, if I call somebody like, hey, I have an event, everyone is volunteering. Speak about the restaurant. Like what kind of cuisines, like what, what is the restaurant about? This one, um, well, my business partner and I, we both Dominican. So him and I, we, he's like the world traveler. And he's never here. You're not going to see him. It's always me. But it's Latin fusion. 
It has um, a little bit of Dominican. All of my catering menu, my entire catering menu, is Dominican food. We call it La Cocina de Maria because my mom's name is Maria. Okay. So, moro de guandule, arroz blanco, bite, pernil, ensalada de papa, any, every dish you can think of, a caridad restaurant or anywhere, is in my catering menu. And if it's not, I'll put it there for you. Right. Yeah, but um, most of our popular dishes here are el rabo con moro de guandule and sweet plantains, the salmon or the uh, garlic shrimp pasta. What I like is how you guys played it. It's like the whole design. You yeah. Know? So, so it's like gastronomy. Yes, you know. You know? I, mean? I also saw you guys have chicken and waffles, which is oh, it's a chicken and waffle sandwich. Okay, Ooh. so it's almost like why have a regular uh, chicken sandwich when you could just have it with a waffle? That's it's nice. really good and sweet too. But I get filling with just half. Right. Yeah. Don't worry, they're not gonna fall. Also, from what I'm understanding, you created like besides the restaurant, you created a personal brand. Yes. And now you know not only you helping women, but also you created a brand that can can highlight you and anything you're doing. So now that you have this brand, you're looking now into fashion, right? If I'm not mistaken? Yeah, I've been having my clothing line since 2017. And I self-taught myself. I took some cricket classes. I always feel like the, the mind is a tool that you have to constantly keep feeding it. So I always want to learn. I'm always eager to learn. And um, I heat press my own merch and I make my own vinyls. I design them sometimes on Canva and then I send them to get done. And um, yeah, most of my clothes, if I show you a camel jacket that I made, it's one of a kind, but it's mine. I don't sell it, so. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's what makes it unique. Yes, well, maybe I'll make you guys something one day. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely gotta come in and enjoy the ambience like on its full, like, you know, like effect. In the yes, kind of vibe. you guys should come. I've seen the, the reels. How do you guys keep up with like marketing yourselves and? I'm doing all that because you have great um, marketing so far. Well, thank you. I do it myself. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'm like a jack of all trades. Um, I did have somebody handling my social media. I kind of have a vision. Once I have something in my mind of how I see it and when I think it should be done and it doesn't get done and I communicate it one time, there's not going to be a second. Mm -hmm. I just like, okay, never mind. I'll, I'll do it myself. I'll do it. But yeah. I think throughout your journey, you've mastered the, the art of delegating. Yes. And delegating is, is very important when you're an entrepreneur. And um, as a woman, I know sometimes you like, you got to tell men, women, everybody what to do, um, or at least show them how to do it. Of course. Or your point of view. So that, that that's a very good trait to have, all of us, you know what I mean? No, 100%. I like to lead by example, but I always encourage my staff, you know, to do more outside of here, you know? I tell them, like, they have talents. One of my staff, um, he does events, and I'm always telling him, like, you know, get out there and, and promote yourself. If you do resumes, do resumes. Like, if I if I want five sources of income, mm -hmm. I want you to have five sources of income. Right. You know, and I'm all and I'm kind of like seeing what you're good at, and I try to encourage you to also do that yourself. Right. You see greatness in the people you work with. Yeah, but sometimes what stops people is just fear. Like I don't I don't fear uh, it not working. I rather. Try, go for it, then over, live with regret. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I have no regrets because I go for it. And I've, I have and no fail your way here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. That's, <laughs> that's how we got here. We failed through we, to get here. You yeah. Know? You know how much money like I have to go through and that I had that I lost that I had to like put it back in yeah. my savings or live out of my savings. Right. People really see just the picture of like, oh, you own Roses at Park, but you don't know how what it took what me it to took get. There. Yeah. They just see the tip of the iceberg, but they don't they, see that. They see the end is. result, but they don't see the the process. Yes, the process. The curating of the spaces. Yeah. yeah. Curating of your team. Yes, everything. And also the quality of the content that you put out. You yeah. know, you you, you, you guys how, good. How was that like? How was like hiring? Because hiring is really important for a place like this. Hiring is important. Um, Your HR, right? I do everything. <laughs> I, I, I mean, over here, I do the liquor order, the food order. I hire, fire, train. If the hostess is not here, I'm the hostess. I'm the bartender. I'm the server. The only thing I haven't done is the grill. But I've even done dishes. Wow. I believe in being a team player. Right. And I like to be a leader where I lead by example. I've never, since I was little, I don't allow a title to get to my head. Just because I'm the owner, yes but I wouldn't be here without my team. Right. So I like to remind them that, you know, if you're busy, I got you. Rosa, what inspires you? Like, life. What keeps you going? 
Like you already, you did it, you're successful, and I'm sure that you feel like you still got so much to do. That's human nature. You know? That's mm-hmm. human nature. Yeah. But I was... what keeps you going every day that you're like, you know what? This is what keeps me going. When you don't want to get up, like what makes you get up? No, that's never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps me going is um, I'm very grateful. I was, I've been in this world. I came to New York when I was nine. I've come from, I've, from nothing. I used to be in the plantation in the yard carrying water from the well like I know what it is to have nothing so the fact that I have what I have now it's an honor and a privilege but I don't take it for granted you know because it could be taken away from me and if it is I know that I have the mental capacity to get back on my feet and And get back get it again and And I will get it again and how do you balance like you mentioned that you're a mom how do you balance being a a mom and a full-time schedule like I wake up at 4.30, so I take advantage of my 24 hours. I always feel like if you feel like you don't have enough time for the day, just ask yourself, how many hours are you spending in bed? How many hours are you sitting and watching TV? You know, I feel guilty sitting down watching TV. I'm not a big TV person, but I'm learning to take Monday, take Mondays to do nothing. I don't touch my computer. I don't do nothing. But Tuesday through Sunday, I'm at 100. <laughs> yeah. That's good, though. You need that, that break from time to time. I don't need a break. Like they say, I'll rest when I die. That's a good attitude. That yeah. is a good attitude. I like working. That's how you get things done, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, if you enjoy what you do, like that, that's... Ain't no, ain't no way it is. I was raised by a single mom, so seeing her, like my mom is a hustler. She came here from the yard, not knowing the English language, working in a factory, you know, making meals and lunches for people to make a little bit of extra money. It's like, come on. I've I been wor- that's- Yeah, I've been working since I was 12. So I don't know what it is to not work. And I like working, so it's not like... Yeah, if you enjoy what you're doing, like it doesn't even feel like work. You know what it is? Some people just feel like work is a chore that they have to do. But just remember, when that paycheck comes, that shouldn't be the only time you're happy. Mm-hmm. Not at all. How, if you don't have the job, then how are you going to survive? How are you going to pay bills? So I know that it's a privilege, and I know that it is a requirement to be here and to be stress-free. So if I had to work three jobs, I, I was even a toll collector one time. Like, come on. Well, like what well, at the Tappan Zee, like, at the Tappan Zee. Yep, I will uh, work. I will work a full forty hours in Long Island City, and then from there I will go and do a toll collector. And then on the weekends I was a waitress. Wow. wow. Yeah. No, I work. Yeah. So like I mean, I even do something right now online. I, I, I'm always <laughs> looking for money. Like, like, like I'm getting antsy right now. Just yeah. Like your way, I gotta. <laughs> this is taking too long. No, no, no. And it's like I want to make sure <laughs> yeah. that I'm I'm always busy. My mind is always evolving but i also want to like encourage other people to do the same and you're also setting up a like a a foundation for your for your kid yeah you know so tuition is not cheap leading by example (sighs) tell me about it and (laughs) they they, they have seen that example that you're putting in front of (laughs) like i don't come from this and you're lucky to be to have access to what i didn't have access yeah 100 Mm -hmm. you know and i have to keep working yeah you know and that's that's very powerful yeah um i saw my mother do that and my sisters you Mm -hmm. know they always plowed through and kept working uh you know just to be themselves and to be mothers yeah yeah i I just want to i just want to make i just want to make my my family proud you know that all the sacrifices they did have not gone, you know, in vain. Right. Yeah. So what is like the one thing that you tell your child, let's say, every day that you want to inculcate in her? her, her My kid, I always, I always tell them to be kind. I want them to not be a follower. That's my one thing. I don't ever want my kids to follow trends. I don't follow trends. I I don't like it. I, I like to be, I like to think outside the box. I like to remain unique. Because I was made unique, and um, I want my kids to always know that. Like, there is a lot of value within yourself. You just being you, like you don't have to fit in with the rest of the crowd. You know, it's better to stand out than to fit in. That's awesome. Yes, yeah. um, That's a great one. But I mean, these kids are spoiled now. They're not like us. Yeah, like it's, now, uh, it's, it's, it's like it's so accessible. with social media. Yeah, and, come on. You know, everything is at your fingertips. From your phones to what you want, what you don't want, yeah. it's right on your phone, and you just check, 100%. and then you see it. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I was thinking about was like with AI, like how do you do homework? Oh my Before, god! Before, like I had to like really pull out a calculator and try to figure stuff out. Now you could just go to ChatGPT. There was no Google it. when I was doing yeah, homework. There was no, you know, nothing. Get that. No. <laughs> get ChatGPT to get it done. 
So there's one thing is you we on a podcast, we're on the Innovators Den podcast, but you have a podcast coming too. I already wrote seven episodes. Wow. Wow. I, I again me you know take making sure my time is being used, but I wrote my episodes. I have my my little blue Yeti mic. I got some headphones yesterday, but I'm a perfectionist right. and I'm learning to just yeah. I don't like to do things it's never gonna a lo foque. Yeah, a lo foque. It's yeah, no. be like half ass but Yeah. But we've learned that we try to do perfect, and it's like every episode we feel like, oh, we could have did this better. Oh, we're gonna do that yeah, better. So we just gotta take note and thing. then just in the uh, next episode. Well, we next, probably don't like somebody else might like. Right? Oh, they might not notice what we see. Yeah. You know, yeah, it could be the um, simplest thing. What, be like, what's the name of it? If so you um, I have my logo, and it's like I I do my reels in the morning on Instagram, so uh -huh. I'm always snapping like top of the morning. So it's called top of the morning. I've top been having this logo, yeah, for like. Seven years. That's now. a good one. Nice. That's a good brand yeah. name. Top yeah. of the morning. Yeah, and it has my finger like this. Like top yeah. of the morning. <laughs> Wake up. Come on. That's a good oh, awesome. one. Yes. That's a good name. Thank you. Yeah, it's got. I'm gonna do it. No later than October. I Can you? It. You're gonna shoot it. Speak from about the topics location? on the podcast. So my first episode that I wrote, it's about mindset. Uh, it's all about empowering. Um, whether it's about being, you know, having gratitude. One is about mindset. The first, I would say, season one is gonna be just me. Season two, I'm, I would like to bring people about, you know, just kind of connecting everything that I do, entrepreneur and also my life coach, and just asking you, like, how are you as an individual, you know? Right. Because mm -hmm. sometimes nobody, if I say, hey, how are you? You're going to say, good. How are you really? Oh, I'm you're great. Say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, so good. I, <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? Like, no. if you really want to go into detail, but the thing is, like, we always like, oh, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Well, like, sometimes you don't want to tell people because you don't know where they're feeling, so you don't want to feel like. But it's not I'm your job to for, figure out to worry about what. No, I, I know, yeah. but you yeah. have to I mean, be honest with yourself. Some people but that's, that's just really how. But that's what I want. I want to go in. You were like, well, I'm feeling good and I'm, I'm getting in. better. Like, I'm going <laughs> in. <laughs> no, we need to yeah. dissect. Dissect, like I'm like, when was the last time you cried? Uh, both of your answer. I have a kid, so I cry all the time. It's okay. I really cried with, with that. That was a. Uh, the only time when your kid was born. I watch a movie oh, with my kid. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm okay. about to say, like, yeah. like, how many years back? No, Allergies. It was, really <laughs> it was not because I was sad. Most of the time but I it's cry okay. because I'm happy something okay. is happening. It's okay oh, to no. be sad. No, you yeah, can yeah. be sad. Yeah. And it's okay to cry out of happiness. And that's the thing. Like, some people feel like when you when you cry is like you're being fragile. No, Sometimes it's good I, to be fragile. Being fragile is not a bad thing. It actually, uh, it, it gives you more energy when you it, it you releases. let go. It's a release. Yeah, because you're holding that in like mm -hmm. parts of your body. Literally, like you see when people like you get caught up when like you feel like you have to say something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you cry, that releases. Yeah, that, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's like scientifically. So that's yeah. what my podcast is gonna. That's I'm, I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna yeah, get I'm everybody out. We all gonna be crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. Now, but okay. that's good. That's good that you building <laughs> that community. Yeah. You know, uh, people do need it. And women need uh, a voice. And, yeah, you know, and men too. Um, yes, I think yeah. mental health, mental especially health with that pandemic yeah. and everything, it's just it's always good to just let everything out. In right, in mental our, health is real. Yeah. In our last episode, um, we had a, a, mu a movie director, and he was talking about like how and how anxious he got during the pandemic and all that stuff. And we're speaking about anxiety yeah. and how pre like prevalent it is now. Like with it's still happening. Yes, yeah, people happening are, all the time. are still not over what happened. And I don't think we'll ever get over what happened. And I don't think it's over either. <laughs> yeah, and like yeah. they just yeah. they just put the volume down oh, yeah. in the news, but it's still happening. It's the happening. hospitals are still yep, one thousand percent. You know, we just not it's not on the media the way we Because we they're always it. throwing other things to distract you. And how did that affect like your business? Because a lot of businesses that during the pandemic? Yes. I made the most money I've ever made in my thirteen years of entrepreneurship. All takeout uh, or no. Uh so me already putting my thinking cap. I closed my business in March, April. I was called to work with World Central Kitchen, and I was making over 3,000 meals a week. And I was like, "What else can I do?" I was even hand delivering groceries in my car in Brooklyn. Wow! I was going to all the seniors I couldn't go. I'm like, "What other contracts do you have? You want me to get food out of my restaurant? Give me a table. Here, potatoes. Here's groceries." I was doing anything and everything possible. I was signing whatever contract. I work with um, Chef Kwame, the guy yeah. from uh, Top Chef, and mm -hmm. we work together. We got more. He has a restaurant. Yeah, in the city. Side, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tatiana or something? Yeah, Tatiana. It's really good. I haven't been there, though. I went to the one he had in D.C. But, um, yeah, I was working. And when I told you that I was working from 4 a.m. to I don't know what time at night, 
And yeah, I, I, I was smart though. I couldn't go out, I couldn't spend, so I saved all my money. Mm -hmm. wow. And I wasn't paying rent because my landlord had to cancel my lease, so I saved all my money. <laughs> That's what's well, yeah, that's a, you know that's like a gift and a curse. Like you see the opportunity in mm -hmm. a horrible situation. You yes, know? yes. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, you always left with that. There's a problem. What's the solution? And that that could be that the is my motto. I'm like, if there's a problem, there's a solution. I don't focus so much on the problem because if not, it's just gonna keep me like in a corner. Right. So I'm always I always I always say every problem has a solution. It's right. just up to you to figure that out and to you know see it in that way. See it in that way. Yeah. Are there any projects that you want to highlight? I mean that we might not know that you, or something that you want to mention that we I, don't know at all? <laughs> ah, well, let's see. I have this restaurant. We mentioned my podcast that's coming soon. The fashion brand. My fashion brand. The podcast. My uh, coaching uh, that I'm doing. The life coach. My 5 a.m., my women's circle. I'm also a marathoner. I run. Nice. Yeah, I'm a runner. That's how I Wait, keep. Wait, the 5K? Uh, no, no, the marathon. The 5K. Come on. Come on. What's a marathon? It's 26. 26.2. 26. Okay, don't forget that. I was like, well, who cares about the point two? Once you run, you understand yeah. what the yeah, point the two points. is. I, I ran the 2020 uh, virtual one. Oh. And I felt it. No, I, I have ran four. New York yeah. City twice, Chicago once, and London. I did it. Bless your heart. This year. I, I'm still feeling my knees. No. So you actually train prior yeah, we to train. or you just, no, no, that's no. your lifestyle. You just working out for that. Right now, honestly, my mind is so trained before my body that I could run 26 miles and I will finish. And I could bet whatever you want. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But if I train, I do a better timing. Got it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I crawled my way to like. I, listen, running is more <laughs> mental than physical. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely. But I always look for challenges. Like, I want to challenge myself. I think a lot of things are like that, though. Yeah, I don't like the fact that I have limitations. Like, why mm -hmm. I can't run a marathon? Who said I can't yeah, run? We limitless. No, I'm yeah. no limitless. Come on, guys. Maybe we could run next year. Who, we? Yeah, we three. I'll run it. See? I'll start Come it. Come on, I'll start it. <laughs> I'll go through it. I'll stay outside <laughs> all day. We'll put podcasts everywhere, like your, your, your branding. Oh, marketing. what do you say? The, the innovators what on the that? run. There you go. On the At run. the marathon. No. At the New York City. Rosa, with Rosa. Let's go. We'll have Wally burning <laughs> us from the car. <laughs> <laughs> you have a drone over our head. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he's driving next to us. <laughs> No, yeah, but no. it's it's those are things that we can do actually to like inspire our community. You and, have to and show that. Um, and even your kids, you just had you know, a baby. Yeah, that's, Lead was, by example. That was right. one of the things I, I think I mentioned in a previous episode. I did it. I have a 15 year old, mm -hmm. so I want to kind of teach her like one. I don't like running, like I don't enjoy it. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean exactly. So it doesn't mean that I don't have to do it. Yeah. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean that you don't have to get up and no. get it done. No. Nope. So you know, it's kind of trying to teach her that lesson. Did it work? It worked. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I tried it on mine. Mine was like, ah, oh, no. Who Money told you to do me? that, mom? <laughs> but, I mean, in, in the sense of like, she she understands that there's things that she oh, no, of course. won't like that she still has to. But you still have to yeah. do it. Yeah. Next oh, wait, another that. thing, yeah, that yeah. I'm doing. So every year I do a turkey drive. Okay. And I get the community together and we raise funds. For the last eight years, I've been feeding over 2,000 families. Wow. So I get food from La Goya. I get stuff from Jetro, Restaurant Depot. The, the, a lot of the um, developers in the area, mm -hmm. I, by the, today I'm sending them email, and I ask them for, you know, a check. So and some type of support. the same way they support, they also come and they help me with the distribution. The goal is to, you know, do a little bit more than 2000 this year. That's dope. You should yeah. document it. I, I do. Well, at the end process, you yeah. know, when it's happening. Yeah, yeah. The day of, I always ask people if they want to volunteer, but I get so many volunteers that I can't say yes to everybody. I go with whoever contributed, I allow them to come first. Right. And then my friends and my women uh, circles, they come. That's dope. That's yeah. amazing. Innovators yeah. then. Yeah, and you guys could come. Hello. <laughs> yeah. And we could bring, you know, him so you could. And we could set up shop. Yeah. yeah. We can document. No, you're going to be giving out stuff. We're going to oh, give out turkeys. Turkeys. We're giving it out, yeah. but we're documenting. I need manpower for all those turkey boxes. We definitely could. I'll have you at least. That's going to be another challenge. It's, it's, it's easier than the, the 26 miles that you did. Oh, you'll be fine. No, I can't do those 26 miles. But yes, you can. I can. No limit. How how you have a limited podcast and you have limitations in your mind? That's not nah, 26 miles mental nah. it's mental you're saying so, it before you even experience so i'm gonna be honest my my legs were gone by mile 14 mm -hmm. so i popped like two tylenols you're supposed to I pop rubbed, before you start and i rubbed a whole bunch of like that well, Bengue? No, no that's spray oh yeah. le spray. i know which one uh, i forgot the spray yeah yeah, yeah spray. It, i know which but one i sprayed everywhere and I just you're like, supposed I just to like, so you to going. prepare yourself you're supposed to pop two tylenols before you start 
Oh, and I then you have, do you have the gummies, the chewables? Yeah, I had some. Okay, you're That's supposed to take them like every two miles. And then soap pills. And then you got to get water and Gatorade at every station. So you see, it's not saying, hey, I'm going to run 26 miles. She prepared herself. No, you have to be. Mentally. Oh, you have to. And the strategy physically and spiritually go through it. Yeah, so no. you see, that's different. Now I know I have to prepare myself <laughs> no, to but it's, run. It's, it's definitely like uh, listen. When you finish, it's it's like yeah. What you feel when you're done, the accomplishment. Yeah, you might you feel like you're saying I ain't doing this again. Yeah. Trust me, you're gonna do it again. That's what I said on my first. So right now we've been blessed. We got over like 400,000 views with all our episodes. There's women looking and I want you to give them at least a couple of tips on if they was to start their entrepreneurship journey as a woman, what would you recommend them do? I think if you have an idea in mind of um, starting a business, just do it. If you take too long just thinking about it, you're going to stop yourself. Fear is going to crawl up inside of you and you're going to find every negative situation of why it cannot happen or why it's not going to happen if you speak to the wrong people about your business idea they're definitely going to say oh i don't think you should take that risk i think working in silence is better showing them your success is much better than talking about it so more action let's talk and just surround yourself with positive mind individuals that are going to encourage you and not disable you to just stay the way that you are Thank you, Lane. Yeah. amen yes that's perfect yes, yes. what's next for rosa at park What's next for me? I mean, other than the, my to-do list that keeps getting longer and longer, <laughs> I would like to finish the last three marathons that I'm, that I'm missing, which is Tokyo, Berlin, and Chicago. I mean, Boston, I'm sorry. But for my business, I mean, sometimes it's like, do I want to open another restaurant? I have gotten approached several times. But with the same branding, like, like yeah. making a Franchise. second location, franchising it. Yeah. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I just I like I like to stay within the Bronx, but I used to have a coffee shop, but I had to close it. God. So I I I want a coffee shop. It's gonna happen because I already have my my conventional oven that I have for my coffee shop. So that's manifestation. Beautiful. I'm gonna get a coffee shop. And that's just it. I the way it you here. have it is like more of a boutique brand type of thing. That yes. You have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's so cool. You know? Yeah, it's gonna happen. Roses at Park, maybe a little speakeasy. You go in the back, have a little whiskey, hey. you know. Nice. <laughs> and maybe it has a back outdoor like like you got here? Yeah, a little patio. Something small. Yeah. 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 Nah, but I think you took advantage of the space and you maximized it. Good job. Thank you. You, you, you took some nothing and you made it into something. Yeah. You I have know. pictures of how it was and I still can't believe it. Like I, I just come here and I just can't believe that it's mine. But again, I I I also say that it's not mine. I'm giving the opportunity to run it yeah. because just like my haven, it could be taken away at any given right. point. Mm -hmm. So from any angle, look at how the pandemic just it wiped shut out the whole exactly. city, like, yeah. you know, well, everywhere. But I count my blessings, yeah. and I'm saving more than I did before. That's amazing. Yes. Well, I think this was a, a good segment. Yeah. We appreciate you bringing us to your spot. I yeah, think it's amazing. Um, you <laughs> have inspired a lot of women, and you know, we want to use this. Uh, opportunity to ignite any woman who's like looking through the cameras like you can do it too you know it's just a mindset yes. and surrounding yourself even if it's not around like you don't know them but you could search for online mentors that like, you could read their books watch their podcast yes. yourself. Yeah. It, yeah. You know? or they could reach out to me I like helping women I've helped girls do their own liquor license I did it myself I never hired a lawyer for my liquor license when it comes to the health department and all the permits that you need I hope so, to anyone watching, if you guys are really serious about starting a business, if you have any questions, you guys could just send an email to. Send me an email to Rosa at Park, spelled out R O S A A T P A R K at gmail.com, or my Instagram, which is Roses at Park, or my personal e e um, Instagram, which is I am underscore Rosa Garcia. There you go. Got yes. It. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you this so was much. fun. This is like talking in La Sara that you know. See, yeah, that's what pretty it's much supposed you're to do. Like yeah, yeah, we talk right. to innovators, right? And people from our community that are doing real things that they might not have been highlighted yet. Yeah. And we want to highlight you and give you your flowers now. Yes. Um and we appreciate everything you're doing for and our Also community. get your story out there to maybe yeah. like spark a, 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 the brain somebody. of someone. Yeah. The yeah. goes to inspire somebody who's watching. Yeah, you know? exactly. Male or female, who, whatever, just be inspired yeah, yeah. by Rosa. <laughs> I just I just want to be um, 
like, I don't know, kind of like just show you that if I could do it, you guys can do it too. Yes. Well, thank Perfect. you so much. You're welcome. Again. Well, we got and to the next generation, like our kids and stuff, like, you know. That's a fact. Yeah, you yeah, have that, to. That's You got to create that foundation for them. Yeah, and you have to show them, you know, like, yeah, someone that just came from the art could, could make it. Or anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, or anywhere, from anywhere in the world or from any background, you know, mm -hmm. whether you're poor, homeless, whatever. It's all about mindset. You just yeah. have to want it and then you figure out a solution for you it. Be, right. You become it. Oh. Yes, yes. I'm all about action. I don't talk too much action takers <laughs> yes beautiful so that's another episode on the innovators then make we're sure here with go ahead <laughs> no i was gonna say make sure you guys follow yeah. us on youtube all the time make sure the you follow end. hit the subscribe button hit share. the like button share click, click. um right. make sure to follow rosa um and rosa thank you so Park, much right <laughs> yes it's a wrap innovators yes. then